With more than 110 peaks rising to elevation of 24,000 feet or 7,300 meters, the Himalayas unsurprisingly contain some of the tallest mountains in the world, and Mount Everest claims first place, with it standing tall at 8,850 meters or 29,035 feet at its peak. If you were to ask someone what the largest mountain range in the world is, most would probably state the Himalayas without hesitating, but that would actually be incorrect. Granted, it's the tallest mountain range in a subaerial sense, meaning it's the tallest that exists above water, but it's the oceans that actually contain the largest mountains to be found on our planet. Hawaii's Mauna Kea, for example, is a mountain of volcanic origin that, from its base to its top, is 33,000 feet or 10,058 meters in height. But even though it's ridiculously tall, in a visual sense it's more than lacklustre when compared to the mountain ranges that are formed by continent to continent collisions such as those witnessed in the Himalayas or the New Zealand Alps to name a few. When we look at the Himalayas we can clearly see its geological past was one that involved an unprecedented level of chaos as the tectonic plate buckled, crumpled and folded itself into this spectacular mountain range. But one thing missing from the Himalayas, which might surprise some people, are volcanoes. And in this video we're going to take a look at why that's the case. Tectonic collisions create the conditions necessary to produce very dangerous natural disasters. From earthquakes to volcanism to tsunamis, these are all related to tectonic elements. But there are different types of tectonic collisions, and we'll explain the difference briefly. The first and perhaps most dangerous one is known as a subduction event, when an oceanic plate makes contact with and subsequently subducts beneath a continental plate. Subduction creates the conditions necessary for large earthquakes to occur, and it's during this kind of tectonic collision that we see the birth of large and highly explosive volcanoes, most of which occur in an arc-like shape that forms a little distance away from the site of the collision, known as a volcanic arc. Their existence is owed to the rocks in the subducting plate, which through pressure and heat readily melt and release certain volatiles that, without getting too much into the theory, allows the mantle to readily melt, creating large buoyant streams of magma that rise towards the surface through the many faults, fractures and weaknesses that the subduction event is creating within the overlying plate. But what's happening at the Himalayas isn't subduction related. Oh no, it's a continent to continent collision. The only reason subduction really occurs when an oceanic plate makes contact with a continental one is because of the density that's associated with oceanic plates. They're naturally denser than continental ones, so they readily subduct beneath them. But when a continent to continent collision happens, subduction doesn't occur. Instead the two plates more or less meet head to head, with only a fraction of one plate really descending beneath the other and it does so at a minute and fractional amount at best because the main result of this collision will be the shearing of both plates against one another, producing a rapid and marked uplift in the land, at the point where the two plates meet. And this is what formed the incredible Himalayan mountain range in only 50 million years, when the Indian plate met with and made contact with the Eurasian one. 50 million years might seem like a lot, but in terms of geological time, that's an insanely short period of time to see a once flat land evolve into the largest mountain range to exist on our planet. And there's a good reason. These mountains are growing at a rate of 1 centimeter per year, and that might not seem like anything, but in the grand scheme of things that equates to 10 kilometers worth of uplift occurring here every million years. If it wasn't for erosion and the fact that it increases as mountains gain height, then the Himalayas would be stupidly large. In fact, let's imagine this scenario for a moment. To go from the surface of our planet to space, it's a roughly 100 km or 62 mile trip. If the Himalayas are growing by a rate of 10 km every 1 million years, that'd mean around 500 km or 310 miles worth of rock has been uplifted in the 50 or so million years since it began growing. And out of that rock, 491 km or 305 miles have been eroded off it leaving the 8.6 to 9 km high range that we see today, which is still growing and is still eroding extensively. So why doesn't volcanism occur here? Well, unsurprisingly, it does. It's just not visible. 
because of the extreme amount of uplift that occurs during continent to continent collisions, the suture point between these plates thickens ever more, in a phenomenon known as crustal thickening. Subduction events, and to a more extreme extent, rifting events, are known for producing crustal thinning, which is when the land actually stretches apart. When stretching occurs, faults and weaknesses are obviously produced, and magma readily rises to fill in the voids. But in continent to continent collisions, you basically have an ever-growing cork keeping the bottle tightly shut, making it unable to spill its contents, so to speak. And that's exactly what's happening here. In the Himalayas, we see the occurrence of extremely dangerous earthquakes as these two plates push against each other until either one gives way or until a slip occurs. But deep under the earth, we have massive magma chambers, forming as a byproduct of this tectonic collision. It's bubbling up and coalescing in one of the many gigantic voids that are hosting them beneath this mighty mountain range. But as previously mentioned, the giant magma chambers will be confined to remaining trapped deep under the ground, where they will eventually cool down and solidify, when this event inevitably ends. And much like we see in many places around the world that had this same type of tectonic collision occur, eventually erosion will whittle down the Himalayas, and in 100 to 200 million years, assuming this land becomes geologically stable and no further tectonic collisions occur, the mountains will be eroded to the point where these gigantic, now solidified and dead magma chambers will make their appearance upon the surface. And this is the same thing that happened in the state in Australia that I live in, where an ancient 450 million year mountain range has been so eroded that the gigantic magma chambers that form beneath it are now revealed on the surface level for all to see. So to sum it up, the too long didn't watch answer for this question is in both subduction and continent to continent collisions the same level of magma is produced, but it'll only be erupted to the surface in subduction events, because the crust of the earth is just too thick in continent to continent collisions. The two still produce the same level of mineral byproducts, along with everything else that's associated with a tectonic collision, but only one will see volcanoes erupting onto the surface, which is probably a blessing in disguise. Because if volcanoes existed in the Himalayas, around all of that snow, I can't even imagine how horrifying La Flows would be. It would make living in areas like this so much more unbelievably risky than it already is. And it's for this reason that volcanoes also don't exist in the New Zealand Alps. And again, thank goodness for that. You guys already have enough volcanic issues in the North Island to worry about. So this is the story of the Himalayas, and why it's devoid of volcanic activity. Eventually, the two continental plates will stop butting heads, and will literally fuse with one another through the process of being welded. Yes, you heard that right. Eventually, these plates will become sutured together, when the point of contact between them will literally become welded through the intense heat and pressure that's occurring as a result of the collision, meaning this landmass will become one. But who knows how long it'll be until that day finally occurs. Until then, this land will continue to shake, and mountains will continue to be built. Thanks for watching.